One of the most important things for ensuring a good night's sleep in a hammock is making sure you're protected from the elements. If you're protected from the wind and the rain, you're far more likely to have a good night's sleep. So for this, you're going to need a tarp. Now today we're going to be using my uh, DD Hammock Superlight Tarp. This is the standard size, the uh, 3 meter by 2.9 meter, so it's almost square. So today I'm going to take you through a few of my favorite hammock setups and how I use them when hammock camping. We're going to uh, rate each one out of four criteria. We're going to look at how well it protects you from the rain, how well it protects you from the wind, how good a view it gives you while you're laying in your hammock, and how much privacy it gives you. I'm also going to show you some ways you can adapt each configuration to give you more space during the daytime for uh, working, cooking, and uh, living space, and then how you can make it a bit more enclosed during the night to uh, protect you from the rain. First, we'll go through some basics. We need a means of attaching our tarp to our ridgeline. Now, we've got a separate video coming soon on ridgelines, so we'll uh, save that for another day. But once you've got your ridgeline set up between your two trees, above your hammock, you're going to need to clip your uh, tarp onto it. So the best way to do this, and to maintain a good tension, is to use a prusser loop. Let's show you how we can do that. So disconnect that for now. We can use any piece of string, be it uh, am steel, zing it, bank line, anything like that, any uh, piece of reasonably strong string. So we've just got a simple uh, length here. This is am steel. And what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it round in a loop like that, like a lark's tail. Do the same again. And again, a third time. Neaten it up. And we formed what's called a prussic. The thing with a prussic, when it's not in the tension, you can easily slide this along the string, no problem at all. But when you put a load on it and you pull, it locks. Now that means that we can attach our tarp onto our uh, ridge line. We can do that with a simple uh, knot. Something like a uh, reef knot will work well. And then pull to tension as we need. Or alternatively, we can have a knot in the end of this. And we can use a clip to attach it. Now I prefer to use a ready-made presser loop made out of zingit that I've spliced into a permanent loop. I find this the best method. It's nice and neat. It's very compact. It's ideal. So for this, again, just loop it on three times. Neaten it up. And there we go. go straight on with my clip. I'll do another video soon to show you how to splice your own little prusik loops. They're also really useful for uh, attaching your hammock to uh, your suspension kit. If you don't want to use a clip, there are alternatives. Get rid of that. And we can use a simple peg or a fancier lightweight peg or just a simple bit of twig that we pick up off the floor. What we do, we take our prusik loop, we pass the prusik loop through the loop of in the corner of our tarp, we put the toggle through, and oh, there we go, that's latched on. The important thing with this is you don't want to have the uh, strap on the uh, tarp out wide and be pulling on the, uh, the, the wood, you don't want the pressure on the wood. You want the pressure onto the uh, zingit or other string you're using. And that's just uh, acting to stop the um, zingit pulling through. For the first setup, we're going to go for a simple A-frame. So all we do, open the tarp up. Find the ridge line. 
tell it's the uh, ridge line because you have the bigger loops here along the top. I'll take one of my clips and I'm going to clip off at one end move it across take a second clip and clip on and then it's just a case of evening things out, out and making sure I've got the tension I need so I pull that tight now some people choose to put the tarp over the top of the ridge line I prefer to sling it underneath the reason for that is because I do worry slightly that the uh, fine uh, zingit uh, line that I use, which is quite hard, quite strong, I do worry that that's going to chafe through my uh, tarp like cheese wire as the uh, tarp flutters about in the uh, in the wind. So I prefer to undersling it. Less wear and tear on my gear. So next, I'm going to pull the one side of the uh, tarp over the top of my hammock and. I'm going to attach a guy line. Now I don't like to keep my guy lines permanently attached. I prefer to uh, keep them separately. The reason for that is uh, if the uh, tarp gets wet, the guy lines generally take a lot longer to dry out than the tarp does. So uh, it's better to keep them separate. Also different configurations need guy lines in different places. So I attach the guy lines quite simply by passing the line up through the uh, loop on the corner of the uh, tarp, pass it around the back, bend it over to form a bite and then just pass that uh, bite, that loop, through the end there. If I pull tight now, that'll lock on and form a real good solid uh, joint. When I want to remove it at the end of the day, all I've got to do is pull on that and it's gone. So one more time, so hopefully you can see it. We're going to go up through the loop. We're going to go around the back. We're going to bend it over to form a bite. Tuck that underneath the other line. And then we just slide the whole thing down and pull tight. To remove, we just pull the loose end. So now I take the guy line and I peg it into the ground. Depending on uh, how much privacy, how much uh, shelter from the wind I want, depends on what angle I uh, peg this in at. If I want uh, it quite low to the ground, lots of shelter from the wind, lots of sh shelter from any driving wind uh, rain, then uh, I'll put it down here. If I want a bit more of a view, then I'll peg it out here somewhere. So uh, somewhere in the middle today. push it down with the boot. Same again on all four corners. So as you can see this configuration gives me quite a lot of protection from the rain, quite a lot of protection from the wind. I've dropped the rear side down quite a bit. Uh, gives me uh, reasonable privacy. I can get changed in there without uh, people seeing too much. Obviously it's open from each end so uh, not complete privacy. Um, and the view is uh, not amazing but uh, there is a bit of a view out of each end. There are things I can do to modify this to give me a bit more space during the day. As an option, in pleasant weather, I can raise this side of the uh, A-frame to give me a bit more of an open working space for cooking and also an improved view. Tighten that back up. That's better. And of course, the same on this corner. So I'll slacken that off, get that in there. And then tension it back up. Sorted. I think perhaps in an ideal world, I'd uh, take those guy lines out a bit wider to uh, stretch this out and get a nicer uh, top surface. Obviously, there's not going to be uh, much uh, runoff for the water here. If it does rain, there is a danger of pooling. 
so it might not be an ideal setup if it is going to rain but it gives you a bit of shade it gives you uh, protection inside there if you uh, do get caught by a quick shower and uh, you've got a much improved view you've got an area underneath here for cooking in if uh, you do get a light shower um, all around quite an adaptable useful shelter This next shelter is another fairly simple one. It's a diamond shelter. And again, it's one of the standard uh, shelters you use with uh, hammock camping. But don't worry, I've got some more advanced stuff coming up soon. So, for our diamond shelter, we find a corner of our tarp and we clip that onto our Prusik. We open our tarp up and find the opposite corner. And again, take another clip and get that attached. I'm leaving it out and tension it up. Now it's just a case of going out the two opposite corners. As with the A-frame shelter, depending on how much shelter from the wind you want or how much of a view you want, you can choose to peg this down low or up high with the assistance of a convenient stick. So the diamond shelter scores really well for protection from the uh, wind and the rain, particularly the rain. Over in the corners here, the, most of your uh, suspension system is covered by the uh, tarp, so you've got awesome protection. You've uh, got great protection from the wind, assuming you uh, angle it so the wind is coming from over the back there. But you still have some privacy when you lower these, this edge. As for the view, it's probably about the best of all the shelters we're going to build today. So now we're going to move on to one of our more advanced setups. So we're going to find a corner of our tarp and we're going to move back two loops from that corner. So it's basically the centre loop along this side. We're going to take one of our clips. I'll clip that to one of our prosecs. Go back to that corner and again we're going to count one, two loops. Again the middle one on that side and we're, again we're going to clip that on to a prosec. We'll uh, centre these out and tension them to get the best possible coverage over the hammock. This shelter is going to have an uneven roof, an isometric roof. It's modelled after the shelters that you find in the Adirondack Mountains, which are in upstate New York. And uh, for that reason, I call it an Adirondack shelter. So we'll uh, take a guy line and we'll connect it to this peak. and then we can peg that out. There we go, with that pegged out, we've got some shelter over the front. Now moving around to the back. This first peg is the most critical part of the shelter, if you want to get the angles right. So what we need to do is we need to pull this back down to the ground, it's the very corner of the tarp, we're pulling it back down to the ground, and we want it to be back behind our uh, hammock's uh, suspension line by about a foot, so that's about uh, 30 centimetres. So that's the distance from the centre line back to here, 
and we want to peg that down like so. I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. There we go. Right, now looking from the back, we're going to take the very next loop and we're going to pull this out, get the angle right so it's nice and tight at the bottom and again, get that pegged out. Again, keeping things symmetrical, I'm going to come around to the other side and peg this one in. And then on to the next. And again, keeping things symmetrical over to this side. Lastly, we're left with this corner, and for now, we're just going to tuck that inside. So now I've attached another tie to this center loop which is usually the ridge line of the hammock. And I guide that out right back over here to lift that center piece of the uh, back wall out. So now with that spare corner pulled back through, I've got a nice place to uh, store my uh, rucksack and any other gear inside, nice and dry. I've got a real good uh, shelter for storing stuff at the back here, beneath my hammock. Moving back, you see the Adirondack shelter gives you real good uh, protection on almost three sides from uh, wind and rain. And all that extra storage space at the back. If you angle this right so the uh, wind is, is onto the back of the uh, shelter, you're going to have a real good protection. However, the rain protection is somewhat lacking. You can see the ends of my hammock are definitely going to get a little bit wet if I get any rain. So this shelter is superb for uh, wind protection as long as you angle it in the right direction. Um, it's not particularly good for rain protection. It's pretty good for privacy on uh, almost three sides, probably 180 degrees you've got good privacy um, and the view is pretty good. So this is one to use on a windy day when you're not expecting rain. A clear disadvantage of this shelter is that I've had to use eight pegs to reduce it. Any of the DD uh, tarps only come with four pegs, so you need to find some extras. Last up, we're gonna make a hammock tent. Now this is the uh, dead of winter, ultimate protection type uh, tarp setup. So for this, we're gonna need a few extras. We're gonna need a few more of these uh, little mini clips. Alternatively, you can use a little stick as a toggle, but you're going to want something that's got some sort of a hook on it, a, a white piece or something to stop it from falling out. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with the basic uh, A-frame style, attached to either end using uh, the, the standard ridge line of the hammock. So these side pieces here, we are going to pass one of these little loops through the other, and then we're going to use our stick to uh, pass down through to make a toggle to hold that closed. If you're using clips, slightly simpler and uh, you just hook on to both sides. What that's going to do is we're going to form a door at either end of the shelter. It's important that you close the doors before you start pegging out. So I'll do the same at the other end. With our doors closed, now it's time to peg out. So we're going to attach our guy lines exactly as we have before, except this time we're attaching onto the second loop of our hurrah tarp. We're going to peg this out, trying to keep the clip central with our hammock suspension. We 
We do the same in each of the four corners. So with this setup now we have superb protection from the wind, superb protection from the rain and complete privacy. There's uh, no way anyone can see in through really other than the tiniest of gaps in the doorway there. So uh, getting changed etc no problem at all. This is definitely the setup to use if you're uh, out hammock camping in the dead of winter. Inside here you get uh, a temperature rise of a good couple of degrees which makes, really makes a difference. And there's no drafts at all, no breezes. So uh, you really can have a warm, comfortable night's sleep. Obvious drawback, there's absolutely no view. So uh, we're ticking uh, superb for uh, wind protection, superb for rain protection, superb for privacy, and a non-existent for view. Inside, you're snug and comfortable. So which type configuration was your favorite? Were there any you've missed? let me know in the comments. I'd really appreciate it if you could click the like button and subscribe. It really helps me to grow the channel. Don't forget to check out my other videos. My channel is still very new, but I'll regularly be uploading more content.